The IBRT's Threadless Store is now open. T-shirts, hoodies, even phone cases and protective face masks are now available at our very own merch outlet, iceboxradio.threadless.com. Choose from the IBRT logos, Scoop Sisters, Funny in a Small Town, Frozen Frights, and more. Then choose your merch. Clothing for men, women, and kids in a variety of colors. Accessories including buttons, stickers, mugs, and tote bags. Even notebooks and skateboards are available, and every sale helps the Icebox Radio Theater continue to bring the Northland's stories to the world. That's the Icebox Radio Merch Store at iceboxradio.threadless.com or just visit iceboxradio.org. And now here's a sneak peek at another great podcast we think you'll enjoy. This is routine update log number six for Dr. Edison Tucker concerning my research into the town of Jerusalem, Oregon, and the existence of the supernatural, paranormal, mythological, and etc., etc., blah, blah, blah. Since arriving, I've definitely encountered some stuff that could be classified under weird ass. The other day, I found what looked like claw marks in the vegetable patch wiring, and nobody in town will talk to me about the picnic area near Lincoln's farm, although... It could be because everybody thinks I'm one of those monster-hunting idiots. Which I'm not, okay? I am an experienced professional who takes my work extremely seriously, and I am going to prove this if it's the last thing I ever... Dr. Tucker, what have I told you about keeping samples in the fridge? (sighs) Although to be honest, I think the biggest mystery on my hands is how I'm going to survive living with Lucille Kensington, stuck-up extraordinaire. So, if you guys don't hear from me again, it wasn't something in the woods that got me. Probably. Where the Stars Fell. Streaming now wherever podcasts are found. Far, far, far to the north in the United States, along Minnesota's border with Canada, there sits a tiny village known as Icebox. Years ago, an event of cosmic significance cut off the village from all outside communication. No television, no cable, no satellite, no internet. This community of a few hundred souls gets all of its news and entertainment from a single, low-power, mostly legal, community broadcast station, Radio Icebox. This is their story. Good morning, Icebox. This is JJ, your program director, Wacky Morning DJ, Jack of all trades and master of none here at Radio Icebox. We have a beautiful summer day in store, a look at local weather and news, right after a word from our sponsor this morning, Icebox Grocery. Hi, this is Larry at Icebox Hardware. Happy to announce that spring is officially here, so the extra security is going to be let go. Now, I'm real proud of you all. We hardly had any incidents this year, and as a thank you, we're going to be holding a Bash the Snowblower event this Saturday at 3 p.m. We got a sledgehammer, and for just a dollar a whack, you can go to town on a Toro Snowblower, all proceeds to benefit the Special Olympics. Now, I know from experience that this event always creates a lot of emotion in people, so my wife has set up an aromatherapy area in the store over by the paint. She'll help you calm down, process all those complicated feelings. Donations accepted. Downtown next to the Nutcase newspaper, and thanks for not burning the snow shovel this year. Okay, good morning, and uh, before we go to news, it looks like we actually have a, a, a phone call coming in, uh, and the listener comes first here at Radio Icebox. That is, if I can figure out how the phone patch works. Uh, ah, ah, hey, you got JJ in the morning show. What's on your mind? He- hello? Yes, ma'am, you've reached Radio Icebox. I'm trying to call the radio station. That's right, you've reached us. It's the morning show on Radio Icebox. So, this is the radio station? Yes, yes, ma'am, it is. Can I help you? I'm trying to call that one on the radio. Uh... The one who talks without a name. It's just letters or something. You mean JJ? That's it, that's the one. Let me talk to him. You've got him. This is JJ in the morning on Radio Icebox. Who? Look, ma'am, let me put you on hold and start a song. I'm sure that we can help you if you just... No, 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 don't put me on hold. I have to tell the people something. The people? Yes, the people. There 
there's an emergency. He's back. Say what now? I saw him in the woods behind my porch. He's back. Who, who, who's back? Bigfoot, of course. Who do you think I'm talking about? Really? You, you saw Bigfoot? That's right. I live at the end of 6th Street along Beach Avenue. The woods are right out my back door. I want to tap out my pa- pipe this morning, and there he was. Seven foot tall, covered with reddish brown hair. I about dropped my bulldog. Your dog was with you? No, that's the type of pipe I have, a bulldog. I see. Well, this is fantastic information, ma'am, and I really appreciate you calling me of all people. Smells. Beg pardon? I said he smells terrible. They call him skunk apes, you know. And if you smelled him, you'd know why. Okay, well, thanks again for... Oh, gosh darn it, I didn't ask her name. Uh, thank you again for that wonderful... For the wonderful lady that just called us to report <laughs> a Bigfoot sighting in the woods along Beach Avenue. News is next. Hey, everyone. It's me, Woody, again. Well, wife didn't get her SUV, so now it's a trip to the casino with the girlfriends. So, uh, come on down to Woody's Guide Service and Bait Shop. We got... Pretty much the same crap we've always had, but there's uh, there's more of it now. Oh, and there's still some t-shirts left from the last Olympics when we put the Olympic logo next to ours. They're kind of rare now, so maybe you should pick up a few for people what visit from out of town. Well, I'd hurry, because the Olympic Committee's lawyers have been looking for who's making the shirts. So as you can see, we, uh, we need money. Maybe a lot. Come down and give me some of yours. Woody's Bait Shop and Guide Service on Beach Avenue in Icebox. Open alternating Tuesdays, 1 to 5. Hurry, because, you know, I might be in jail soon. Woody's! Okay, well, uh, let's go ahead with the news, I guess. Uh, Our top story this morning, Bigfoot sighted by an area woman in the woods beyond Beach Avenue. More on this story as it develops. In other news, a candidate's debate designed to weed out the field for this fall's mayoral election descended into literal mudslinging Tuesday evening when Edgar Potlatch, the candidate from the recently formed Edgar Potlatch is always right party, had a philosophical disagreement with Gloria Goldstein Hughes, the candidate for the Age of Aquarius Polytechnic Party. Goldstein Hughes, who brought a bucket of mud to the debate as a visual aid, splattered Potlatch in what she claimed was an accident while gesturing enthusiastically with the bucket. Potlatch then seized the bucket, dumped its contents on Goldstein Hughes' head while screaming, no taxation without representation, after which Goldstein Hughes pelted her opponent with handfuls of one part water, four parts potting soil, while screaming down the patriarchy. The judges declared no winner of the debate, but did declare the American people the loser. Video of the event passed a million views on YouTube in just under 48 hours. A flock of Canadian geese are being blamed for a convenience store robbery on Highway 71 last night. After Shirley Baltor of International Falls reported seven of the majestic gray, black, and white birds came into the stop and shop near the junction with County Road 710 and refused to leave. Though Mrs. Baltor does not claim the geese actually demanded anything, she does claim they, quote, stared at her funny until she opened the register, unquote. The geese then took all available paper money, U.S. and Canadian, and waddled out of the store. The gang of thieves took to wing before police could arrive, making their getaway in picture postcard fashion as they rose into the sunset, flying in a perfect V formation. This is the first reported case of foul play at the Stop and Shop since 1997. Hi, I'm Carl. And next time you want to take your party, bar mitzvah, or wedding up a notch, you could do a lot worse than Carl's royalty-free DJ service. I got all the gear, all the sounds, and all the youthful energy to keep your party going all night long and without having to pay one cent in artist royalties. That's real important. My Uncle Dave went to law school for a year and he told me so. So all of our songs are 100% free of copyright and 100% fun. So if you want to make sure your grandma's birthday party really kicks it, hire Carl's royalty-free DJ service. Carl's Royalty Free. See his flyers with the little phone numbers you can tear off at Lake Grocery. Let the legally sanctioned fun begin! Okay, 20 minutes past the hour here at Radio Icebox, and we have yet another call coming in. Hello, you're on the air. Hi, yeah, I'm holding for Jimmy Jim. Yeah, yes, this is JJ. Right, yeah, this is Steve. Hey, look, I was calling because my neighbor said she saw Bigfoot. 
I seen him too. Oh, 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 I see. And where do you live? Why? Well, we're trying to track the story, and that means figuring out where you saw whatever it was you saw. I don't want to tell you where I live. But you live in Icebox. I just said I don't want to tell you where I live. Right, right, right. It's just that if you can get our radio signal, you're within about two miles of the Opera House. I don't want to tell you where I live. Right. Okay. Uh, So tell me what you saw, Steve. Well, in my woods behind my house, those are the woods off Beach Avenue, I seen him walk back and knock a couple branches off trees. Okay, uh, really, and how would you describe the, the creature? Probably eight, nine feet tall, maybe, 500 pounds. Wow. Smelled real bad, too, just like Polly said. Her place is just up the road from mine at 602. I'm about two doors down from hers, all. But I don't want to tell you where I live. Your secret's safe with me. Uh, Thank you, Steve. Uh, We're following a big story here at Radio Icebox. Bigfoot sighted off Beach Avenue. So we need to... Oh, wow, we got another call coming in. Uh, You've reached Radio Icebox. You're on the air. What are you going to do about it? Uh, Sorry, this is JJ at Radio Icebox. Who am I speaking to, please? This is Edgar Potlash, Beach Avenue. And I pay my taxes. That's very commendable, sir. What are you going to do about it? (sighs) Do about your taxes? No, no. This joker in the monkey suit walking through the woods. He just came through my backyard, stepped right on the wife's begonias. She's off shopping in the city, so I know she's going to blame me when she gets back. So I want to know what you're going to do about it. So you saw Bigfoot, too? Don't change the subject. I pay my taxes. Well, have you called the police? No. They don't take my calls no more. That's why I'm running for mayor. Uh, well, sir, we're a radio station. We're a private business. We don't actually receive any tax dollars. Oh, sure. That old excuse. You just, you're just like the grocers at the hardware store. I pay my taxes and I expect service. Okay, but to clarify, you've sighted Bigfoot in your backyard along Beach Avenue. That's right. Number 302, just two doors down from Steve. He's at 306, 306 Beach Avenue. Uh, Steve didn't want his address read out over the air. Oh, uh, just erase that, then. This is live radio. Oh, well, for the love of... What, what do I even pay my taxes for? Okay, uh, it's 25 past the hour here at Radio Icebox. We're going to play a song, catch our breath, but stay tuned for the latest on all these Bigfoot sightings uh, right after this. Woo. JJ! Abby, hi. Man, the weirdos are out, are out this morning. I heard, I heard. JJ? Oh, hi, Abby. Uh, you just get in? Oh, uh, just five minutes ago. Did you hear? I did, yeah. Good morning, Cody. Good morning, JJ. Boy, the weirdos are out this morning, aren't they? That's what we wanted to talk with you about. Yeah. You two wanted to talk to me? Yes, but we need to wait until... Oh, I'm here, I'm here. Good morning, Major. Boy, the weirdos are out this morning, aren't oh, they? Good morning, JJ. And you don't know the half of it. Yeah, that's, that's usually the way it is. Uh, So, what can I do for the three of you? Well, we need to talk. About Henry. Right. Uh, Henry, who's he? Yes, it was them phone calls, JJ. Oh, well, those were from an Edgar, and I think there was a Steve. Edgar Potlatch? Yep, yep, that's the guy. Mm. He's way ahead in the polls, you know. Oh, he's going to be the new mayor soon. Well, there are worse things that can happen, though I can't think of any right now. Uh, And it's unimportant. This is about Henry. Yes. Henry, who's, who's he? Wait, have we done this before? Henry is who the phone calls were about. We've got to help him. But the phone calls were all about Bigfoot. Right. So Henry is... Yes. Okay, I'm going to take a moment here and ask a question that I can only describe as hopeful. All right. Is there any chance the three of you are here out of a concern for a man who likes to dress up in a monkey suit and wander around scaring the neighbors? No, no, that's not what we're talking about at all. That's what I was afraid of. You're, you're talking about an actual thing, aren't you? I think it's a little rude to refer to him as a thing. Yeah, he gets that all the time. He doesn't need to hear that from us. So we're, 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 we're talking about an actual Bigfoot, right? Well, of course. Are you three saying you actually know this creature thing? Entity? You know this entity? Right? Well, Cody and Major know him. I just met him once at a board game night. Right. You met Bigfoot at board game night? Sure. Bigfoot plays board games? Well, no. Generally, the table's too small. He just stopped by to borrow something, I think. Uh, A book, I think. Right, right. Okay. Okay. You, uh... All right, JJ? Okay. Okay. Is he okay? Oh, yeah. 
He just needs a minute to rebuild his perception of reality. Uh, we all need that sometimes. I'm back. See? Bigfoot <laughs> exists. Uh, yeah, yeah, we know. And you guys are wanting to, um, what are you guys wanting to do exactly? Well, we need to help him. Yes. Help him do what? Does he have a problem? Oh, we're not sure, but we're concerned. Very concerned. He shouldn't be in town like this. Why not? I, I thought you just said he came to board game night. Oh, it's just not good. It's kind of like that fox that was spotted in town last year. The one that kept wandering up to people. Yeah, I remember that. We thought it was rabid. Right. Uh, same principle here. If a wild animal starts wandering up to people, it, it means something's wrong. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Are you saying Bigfoot's rabid? Oh, of course not. Don't jump to conclusions. Well... Grandpa! Well, I, I'm sorry, but... We don't know what's going on. We know Henry's not right, and the best available data suggests Bigfoots are warm-blooded, which means they are susceptible to rabies. But you, you can't say that out loud. You'll scare people. There's no one here but JJ. And now I'm scared. Oh, you're always scared about something. Well, that's true. Look, JJ, we're talking about here is going into the woods and finding Henry and just making sure he's okay. We're worried about him, and he's our friend. Yes. Okay, so what do you need me for? Uh, you're just a contingency plan. For what? Uh, well, if we find Henry unconscious, it will take all four of us to lift him. Uh, that's a good rule of thumb. One adult Bigfoot equals four adult humans. But we really don't think it's going to be necessary. Oh. We just, we just want you along just in case. How do you guys have such, such information? Internet. Yeah. And you believe the internet? When it comes to information on Bigfoots, sure. Where else are you going to find that? So, so sorry, did you just say Bigfoots? Yes. Shouldn't it be Big Feet? What? You said Bigfoots. Shouldn't the plural for Bigfoot be Big Feet? <sighs> it's the Klamath Falls Conference all over again. Oh, don't get him started on this, JJ. Start Started on what? Oh, on what the plural form of Bigfoot should be. Uh, there's been extensive debate online and in person about the proper plural of Bigfoot. And people worry about these things? Oh, people obsess about these things. <laughs> Let's just all settle on saying Bigfoots for now. The, the debate can wait. Yeah, the debate between smart people and people who are stupid and wrong. You mean the big feet people? Of course. Okay. Okay, uh, just checking. What are you guys going to do now? Well, first we provision, then we meet at dusk in the woods off of Beach Avenue. What, what, wait, what, what, we're going into the woods at night? Dusk, I said. Yeah, but that comes right before... JJ, don't d think about it. <laughs> and so the day passes with the tiny village of Icebox caught in the grip of fear. Bigfoot fear. Reports of sightings roll in. The radio station reports diligently. The police department takes their phone off the hook and hides in the basement. But luckily, no close encounters or property damage is reported beyond Mrs. Potlatch's begonias. It's ten hours later now, and Cody, JJ, Abby, and Major Rideau have gathered at the end of 6th Street, where the calm and order of town gives way to the animal savagery of the wilderness beyond. Gazing into the woods and their destiny, the quartet of adventurers takes a moment to collect their thoughts before J.J. speaks. I'm going home. Grab him, Cody. Got him. Let go. I'm not going out there. There's nothing to be afraid of. Well, well then why are you carrying a rifle? Oh, what? what is this? Uh, uh, this is more of a, an accessory than a gun. Uh, it goes with a pith helmet and the cargo shorts. Bandolier's a nice touch, too. Oh, thank you. So you're going into the woods with a high-powered rifle, and I'm guessing 30 rounds of ammunition, and you're claiming that it's safe? Yes. Why? Well, uh, because I have a high-powered rifle and about 30 rounds of ammunition. And you're saying that's enough against Big Feet? Grandpa, hand me the rifle. Boys, would you quit squabbling and get it together? Dusk is the best time to find Henry, and I'm getting worried. From everything you said, it sounds like Henry can take care of himself. Which is very possible. We just have to be sure. Right. Okay. Okay, fine. Are you going to be okay? I think so. I just, uh, I just don't like nature. We know. We'll keep as much of it off you as possible. Thank you. Let's go. So, uh, how exactly do we find Henry? First, 
look for footprints. It's pretty hard ground here, so that might be tough. Uh, there should be some soft spots in the mud deeper into the woods. Uh, could find a few prints there. Oh, and we know he was seen behind Beach Avenue and nowhere else. He could actually have gone deeper into the woods. Oh, he could have? Of course. Bigfoots are elusive creatures. They don't like being around people or anything. But that's a major region, reason we're out here. Right. Wait, so he, he might not even be around. Oh, we've established that, yes. Okay. Okay, well, I feel better now. We, we might be alone. Just, uh, just, we'll just look for footprints. Footprints and other things. Other things like what? <laughs> Ew. Like scat, for example. Bigfoot scat? It's funny. You can usually smell it farther away. What am... What am I... What? Ha! JJ stepped in the Bigfoot poop. Oh, leave him alone. We've all done it. Oh, I know, I know. I'm just funning him. Here. I'll give you a hand, JJ. Yeah. Hey, my foot's stuck. Well, yeah, that's a trait of Bigfoot's leavings. <laughs> Very adhesive. Uh, what? I, I can't get loose. Oh, careful, JJ. If you thrash around too much, you'll end up... <laughs> Ooh, more stuck. Both feet are in it now. Well, that's the thing about you, JJ. Eventually, you'll always put your foot in it. Would somebody help me, please? Oh, of course. Uh, Cody, get one side. I'll get the other. I'll grab him around the waist. Okay, on three, everyone. One, two, three. <laughs> that's got him free. Well, that's... Partially true. <laughs> I think you forgot something, JJ. Your boots are still stuck in the poop. I know that. Don't you think I know that? <laughs> What'd you leave your boots in the poop for? I didn't do it on purpose. That's just really sticky scat. Okay, just set him down. He's getting heavy. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. What is it? I'm in my stocking feet. So? So I haven't done laundry this week, and these are my last socks. Are you suggesting we carry you around the woods? Well, I wouldn't say no. Oh, drop him, boys. Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> you okay, JJ? You dropped me. Well, you really asked for it. Yeah. You dropped me right next to the poop. If I'd fallen in, I could have been stuck here forever. Oh, nonsense. We could have come back with a block and tackle and got you free. But only after you thought about what you did. Yeah. Carry you around the woods. <laughs> You're heavy, JJ. Well, there's no reason to get sensitive about it. Yeah. Come on, JJ. Let's forget about it and just go. Yeah. You, you, you guys. What is it? Th 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 there's something over there. Over where? I don't see anything. Over there. What? Seriously, JJ, we don't see anything. Well, from my newfound location, prone on the ground, I can see it. I can see two big feet. Reddish brown fur? Yes. Ten toes? Uh, about size 32. Extra wide? At least. Okay. All right, Henry. Come on out. We see you. Eep. Hello, Henry. How are you feeling? Oh, sweetie, I'm sorry to hear that. You shouldn't go walking through town like that, Henry. Yeah, you, you had us worried. <laughs> oh, that's JJ. He's a friend. Eep! A frightened friend, but a friend. That is the biggest creature I've ever seen. Well, yeah, that's kind of their thing. <laughs> what, what, what's he saying? He's asking who put the boots in the poop. Really? Really. I think he's kind of proud of it. You really? No, I, I, I kind of see that. I, it's kind of a dark human impulse to show off your poop. I had this roommate at college. He always made us look before he flushed. Weird guy. He's in the legislature now. Well, Henry says the boots are ruining the effect, and he's going to take them out. Uh, thank you, Henry. Uh, uh JJ? Uh, yeah? You're probably going to want to toss those boots out. Yeah, so I smell. All right, Henry, now that we're here, we want to talk to you. We want to make sure you're all right. 
Yes, we know. Uh, but it's not like you to come into town like that. Oh, a dozen or more people saw you, you know. Oh, that's all right. We just have to make sure you're okay. Y you're what? What do you mean? Is this a good time to ask how you three understand everything he's saying? We learned the language, obviously. Oh, uh, yes, it's also obvious now. Quiet. Henry, repeat what you just said. We didn't understand. <laughs> what did you hear? Uh, sounded like I am malfunctioning. Yeah, that's, that's what I heard, too. Do you have any idea what he means? Uh, no, no, none. Henry, we don't understand. What do you mean when you say you're malfunctioning? What, what do you say now? I've said too much. You have? Oh, no, that's what he said. No, I, I don't understand. We don't either. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> What's happening? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, st stand back! Grandpa? I know. I know. My, my theory is correct. Abby? Yes, JJ? Did Bigfoot just blow up? It appears so. Major? Oh, it's just as I thought. Good. If it's just as you thought, can you explain it to the rest of us? Well, it's, it's a theory that's been kicking around the internet for a couple of years now. You know the problem with proving Bigfoot exists. Are we really worried about that now? There's a Bigfoot slumped right in front of us, a tendril of smoke rising slowly from the top of its head. Oh, very poetic, JJ, but, but beside the point. Researchers have been unable to prove the existence of Bigfoot for decades now, despite the fact that virtually everyone is carrying a cell phone these days. A, a cell phone equipped with a camera. Right. And yet we still don't have any photographic evidence better than the Patterson-Gimlin film from 1967. Oh, is, is that the one where Bigfoot is, is walking off into the woods and kind of looking back over his shoulder? No, it's the one where Bigfoot is walking off into the woods looking back over her shoulder. W what? You mean it's a female? Yes. How do you know? There are breasts, JJ. There are breasts? Yes. Clearly visible right there in the film. Huh. You know, I usually notice clearly visible breasts. Can we get back to the subject, please? Sure. W what was the subject again? Why there is no proof of Bigfoot. Right, right, right. Sorry, I just was getting distracted by the thought of... Uh, yes, Geigel. we know. Continue, Major. As I was saying, the lack of conclusive photographic evidence, despite the proliferation of cameras, has led to some Bigfoot researchers to consider alternative theories about the creature's nature. That's right. Up until 20 years ago, it was assumed if Bigfoots existed, they were just a previously unknown species of primate. Yeah, just an animal living in North America with a, a really good hiding instinct. But now, we're considering other alternatives that might explain how such a huge creature could remain hidden in the wilderness. Which mankind encroaches on more every year. Right. Hidden in a wilderness with us humans encroaching more every year. I mean, it only makes sense, right? I mean, if they were just an animal... We should eventually have something besides a bunch of easily faked footprint casts. A picture, a video. A corpse. Right, or a Bigfoot corpse. We should have had it by now, right? I'm sorry, were you asking me? Because <laughs> I was still thinking about... Ugh, your conclusion, the gentlemen? <sighs> Our conclusion is this. Maybe Bigfoot isn't an animal at all. Maybe he's a robot. I mean, clearly he's a robot. He just blew up in front right. of us. Right! And that's why we're very excited by this development. Ooh, wait, but what about the poop? Oh, pretty sure if we took it back to the lab, it would prove to be something besides poop. Like what? Eh, mystery substance, maybe. Uh, given what just happened to Henry, I'd be willing to bet it won't be organic poop. Hey, I just realized. We have a corpse now. You're right. We actually have a Bigfoot body. 
to take back to the laboratory and study. Take back? How? Well, remember we brought you along because it takes four to carry a Bigfoot? I assume that goes for dead or alive? I assume, yes. Wait, wait, we're going to carry that thing? Must weigh a ton. About half a ton, I'd say. Uh, We just have to get it back to the trailhead. I'll bring my pickup around. Wait a minute, wait, wait. If Big Feet... JJ? uh, Sorry, if Big Foots were robots, then who built them and why? That's the next mystery to solve, JJ. And I'll bet we can take some big steps toward it by getting this thing examined. We should really get back to the lab as as soon as we... Uh, Major? Yes, Abby? Was was that what it, uh... Was that what it looked like? A UFO... Swooping down, picking up Henry with the tractor beam, then zipping away. Yes, yes it was. Well, I guess we know why we can't find any Bigfoot corpses around. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, uh, wait. Uh, Abby, I think JJ's brain is melting. Yeah, I see that. It was a flying spaceship, saucer space sky... Come on, J.J., let's go home. But the thing and the stuff and the big... Yes, yes, I know. Oh, look, they de-pooped your shoes. My my, 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 my shoes? Yes, the poop's gone like it was never there. It was never there? All right, let's go with that. It was never there and you were never here. Never. Abby, is he going to be all right? (sighs) He will be. He just gets this way when his reality matrix is compromised by, you know... (laughs) Fact. <laughs> He'll just need to lay down for a little while. I'm in my stocking feet in the woods. Bert and Ernie will be very upset. Bert and Ernie? Yeah, when he gets like this, his inner child takes over and he believes he lives on Sesame Street. I'll give these socks to Oscar the Grouch. He'll love them. Maybe he'll let me see inside his can at last. Can we do anything to help? You could pick me up a big bottle of whiskey. For you? Oh, yeah. For me. Sunny day, deep in the clouds away. This has been Radio Icebox. The day the foot stood still. Diane Adams, ladies and gentlemen. Cody Boyer, Justin Kapla, Ayla McIntosh, Tom Bement, Caleb Silvers. On sound effects, Evie Conan. Our engineer, Ian Hall. Mark Black, the bush pilot. Jim Yunt right out there. Thank you so much for coming. I meant to look up what next week's concert is. Does anybody know? It's Darcy Sullivan, ladies and gentlemen. Her own self performing. What? And friends. She has friends and she's going to prove it next week, Wednesday, 7 o'clock. Thank you very much for coming out. Good night. Radio Icebox, The Day the Foot Stood Still, was written and directed by Jeffrey Adams. It starred Jeffrey Adams as J.J., Ayla McIntosh as Abby, Cody Boyer played Cody, and Tom Pament was Grandpa. The show was recorded before a live audience at the Pete Peterson Banshell Smoky Bear Park, International Falls, Minnesota, on July the 28th, 2021. Our Foley artist was Evie Conat. Sound design and Henry sounds by Jeffrey Adams. Engineering by Ian Hall. This program copyright 2021 by the Icebox Radio Theater, which is solely responsible for its content. Partial funding made possible in part by the voters of Minnesota through a grant from the Minnesota State Arts Board, thanks to a legislative appropriation from the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. For more information, visit our website at iceboxradio.org. Thank you.